Right, so let's go ahead and get everything set up that we need then. Uh, important to note that we're starting with absolutely nothing, so we're going to be doing this entirely from scratch just to make it as simple as possible. Um, I'm currently on a local development environment. I'm using Vagrant, but feel free to use MAMP or WAMP or whatever you use. Um, and there's nothing in here. We're getting a 403 because there are no files within this directory, so we're starting completely from scratch. As mentioned, you need Composer. Uh, go ahead and, and Google for the PayPal PHP SDK over on GitHub. And you might also want to Google for it on packages so you can see specific versioning information. We'll be pulling this down with the Composer. And obviously make sure you're signed up for a PayPal developer account. We'll be creating the app in this video. So really the first thing I want to do then is just set up my Composer file to actually pull in this dependency. So really the first thing that we're going to do is create a new file within here. Let's just save this out. And we'll save this as composer.json. You can do this from the command line, but we'll do it here just so it's a little bit easier. So over on the GitHub page, then it does give you uh, the repository name that you can actually pull this down. It'll need to be under require. It's obviously a production requirement. And it does give an asterisk here, but you might want to pull in a specific uh, version of this. That's probably a better idea rather than just pulling in the latest version. Because when you do a composer update, this is going to install the latest version, which may not be uh, obviously compatible with what you've done before. Um, but either way, then, let's paste this in. I'm going to use asterisks for now, but just make sure you make the right decision when you are uh, making a live app. So we've now got this. All this means is that we're pulling in this from that GitHub account or from Packagist. We're downloading this, um, this sort of uh, dependency and pulling that into our application, that all that's all it means, just so we don't have to manually download, download the files. So I'm currently within this directory here. If we just do a listing, uh, you can see the composer.json file that we created. This works on Windows as well, if you are working on Windows. If you understand uh, Composer, you'll know all this. But now we're gonna run Composer just to make sure we have Composer installed. If you do, we're then going to run Composer install that's going to install them dependencies for us basically pull that uh, paypal um, uh, sdk down an sdk is just a software development kit it basically means that we can easily connect to paypal in order to process payments and this is a really great library so that uh, dependency is now pulled down you'll notice a vendor folder has been created with your paypal um, SDK in here and we've also got this auto load file as well which we can pull in to pull in the functionality of our uh, of our dependencies so next thing we want to go and create an app under PayPal developer we can get rid of these two now so I've already got one here but let's create a new app and let's give this a name so I'm just going to call this website and you'll see that we get a sandbox developer account here remember we had that test account uh, facilitator account uh, when we looked at the demo in the last part hit create app that's going to go ahead and create that application for you and there we go so there's a couple of things that we need to note here we've got a client id and a secret you're going to need these to be able to actually access the api and this is also uh, the end point for the api is api sandbox paypal.com now it's important to note that when you do actually go live you're going to need to switch this over so you'll see your live credentials we're not going to cover this because it's pretty self-explanatory within this paypal developer dashboard but uh, once you're done you can you know figure that out so the next thing we need is the app redirect urls these are basically the authorized urls that we use to redirect back to our application so the app uh, return url for testing is just going to be this URL here. So we can copy this and just paste that in. Hit save and that's going to go ahead and save that for us. And then we know that that's an authorized redirect URL. We specify the URLs when we write the code. But now that that's all done, you're going to need to set up an account to be able to actually sign in and use this. So I've got a couple of uh, accounts already uh, created. Um, I'm going to be using this one here. But you're going to want to go ahead and create an account, set a password. You can set all of the information associated with that account, and then you are ready to go. So now that we've got our dependency pulled in, uh, we can actually start to build 
uh, this payment functionality. In the next video though, we're gonna look at the actual process that we go through to be able to actually define what we want the user to pay for, how we go to PayPal, how we're returned back. So that's gonna be a very short uh, explanation of how that actually works, because that's really key to understanding how to process payments with PayPal.